Singapore banks, starting with DBS, is going to kickstart earning reporting on 7 Feb 2024. This is followed by UOB on 22nd Feb and OCBC on 28th Feb. I was at a presentation together with SGX Group analyst Jeff Howie last week. We were talking about the market outlook for 2024. And of course, one of the hottest topics was Singapore banks' performance this year. We know that the market is pricing in a potential rate cut of 6 to 7 times in 2024, but the Fed is pricing in only 3 times. Interest rate is going to affect the bank's net income margin during the initial phase of rate hike, but how about now, when there might be a potential rate cut? Jeff Howie said during the presentation that 2024 outlook hinge on rate cuts. Interest rate, be it a cut or a hike, is going to impact Singapore's bank loan growth. End of the day, it is about whether SG banks can get more juice out from each loan if rates continue higher versus loan growth. DBS CEO on 2024 said, while higher for longer rates support NIM, which is the net interest margin, there is likely a trade-off with the loan growth. And the bank expects for 2024, the net interest income to be around 2023 levels and net profit to be maintained around record 2023 levels. Now, what this means is from my personal interpretation is that the statement suggests that Singapore banks like DBS anticipate challenges and trade off in 2024 due to the interplay of interest rates, net interest margin, loan growth and overall profitability. In other words, they are expecting that what it's going to happen in 2024 would be similar in 2023. And we know that investors generally don't like this kind of situation. They like growth. They like increment. So what I'm going to do in this video is to take a look at DBS and to look at it from the price point of view, what investors, what the market really, really think about 2024 for DBS. And with this, perhaps that we can have a bit of a preview into the Fab earnings. Have you clicked the subscribe button? And how about a like? This is a weekly chart of DBS bank price movement in 2021, 2022, and 2023. Look at the dotted black line. So this would be the first US rate hike in March 16. And this marked the end of the near zero interest. At a point when we have a rate hike, what happened to the current price movement? We can see that price is actually moving in a triangular pattern. So this essentially means price isn't really moving anywhere. It goes up, it goes down, it goes up, it goes down. So essentially, what happened based on what we are seeing here is that the market was trading on a buy the rumor. So DBS moved up because during 2021, that was a rumor of a potential rate hike. And when that rate hike was delivered, we can see that at the point that the hike happened, instead of going up for the banks, because we know that at the initial stage of a rate hike, a rise in the NIM, which is the net interest margin, often play a key role in driving back bank stock prices up. Now, why would there be a rise in net interest margin? Because then with the deposit that you, depositor, have given to the bank, they are able to lend it out to businesses and individuals at a higher rate. We saw that our housing rates, right, our loan rates basically increased during the periods of rate hike. But what is being shown as the price of DBS was that by right, we should see an increase in price that what we saw in early 2021. But we didn't see that in 2022 and 2023 when US Fed was aggressively hiking the interest rate. Now, what this means is only one thing, which is to buy on rumors and to sell on news. So this was a very typical case of buying the rumors, selling on news. So yes, buy on rumors, sell on news. And we have the current rumors going around. 2024, there will be rate cuts. So there's a disparity between how many times of rate cuts. Anyway, the market is expecting more, but Fed is saying, no, 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 you have to be realistic. We might not deliver a lot more. Right, in this case here, what is happening right now for DBS is that it's trapped in a triangular pattern here. What this essentially means is that price of DBS is going to move within this triangular pattern find like a support at the low or the bottom of the triangle 
and to find a resistance at the top of the triangle. Uh, but I just wanted to draw in one more line for you to see and that is this line here. I'm finding potentially the triangle is getting slimmer or tighter. Well, this is not a very good news because it means that with each of the highs, right, the high is getting lower than the previous high. So for example, if this high was, let's say, $36, then each time when the price was being pushed up by the buyers, it can only go to, let's say, 34 And this time round, it can only go to, let's say, um, 33 right? So each of the the high is getting lower means that potentially the buyers are getting weaker. The, and to trade this triangular pattern, we will have to assume that at the low of the triangle is where the support might be. So essentially, investors are looking at a place of demand. And when priced is to move near to the top of the triangle, assuming that we are getting a bit of a slimmer triangle, as to assume that this is a zone of supply and investors will be looking a little bit bearish here. Right, so ultimately, end of the day, when price continue to move within the triangle, and of course, there might be a potential to go higher of this triangle here, then uh, eventually price has to break out of this triangle. So what is the meaning of breakout? To break out means that price will move down out of this triangle to move lower or to break up and to head towards the upper triangle here. So I guess that this time round, the earnings is really very important because it does give us an insight whether price will continue to be within the triangle or will be out of the triangle. Now, the other line that I want to bring to your attention is this level here, which is 32.30. Now, this level so far had been resisting DBS. As long as price does not and cannot move above this level, which is 32.30, then I would be treating it as currently a bearish move. So far, DBS hasn't been able to move above 32.30. So uh, in this case, I see a certain levels of a weakness here. Hopefully, if uh, it, I mean, if it can, then it should move towards the top of this triangular pattern. But if it doesn't, then I would think that ultimately DBS has to come down and break out of this triangle. So end of the day, uh, for investors who are looking at holding DBS for a long time, uh, you might want to consider to hedge in your position. That means that you are holding DBS for, uh, let's say, a period of time for its dividend, but temporary, if it's out of the triangle, then you might want to consider some form of a hedge. All right? So a hedge can mean you are taking a short-term sell position on DBS. So there are a few hedging products that's available in that. SGX. Uh, one of them is with DLCs. So I'm just going to just quickly jump to the DLCs here to talk about you know how it works. All right, for DLCs is an exchange traded product, so you can trade the DLCs in SGX as if you are buying a SGX stocks, and it allows investors to take a leveraged exposure to an underlying asset. What's important here is the DLC is a derivative product, so there is a, an underlying that it bases the price on. So for example, if you are looking to trade, let's say, the Hang Seng Index or the Singapore Index or for example, Kappa or DBS, then yes, you know, these are the underlying and attached to it, there will be a DLC, right? The performance of the DLCs will be based on the performance of the underlying. Say for example, in this case here, if Kappa is to move up by 2%, then the movement of the DLCs on the very same day will not be 2%. It will be 2% multiplied by the leverage factor because DLC is a leverage product and leverage effect means that any of the movements in the underlying assets, it will be amplified. In order to treat DLCs as that you have to be SIP qualified. That means you have to show that you are qualified to trade this product. I have a QR code here which you can scan and then you can go and find out more on how to get qualified. The the key thing about DLCs is that it allows you to tap into price movement if the underlying is going up or to tap into price movement if underlying is heading down. That means that for DLCs, there are two directions. One is a long DLCs, 
versus the other one is a short DLCs. Long DLCs means that if you think that in the future price is going up, then you will be buying a long DLCs. And for short DLCs means that if you think that in the future price is heading down, then you'll be buying a short DLCs. You do not need to own the underlying or you do not need to own any of the script first. You could just take a position depending on your direction preference. Say, for example, if I think that DBS is probably going to go down and probably going to break that triangle, then I would want to hedge in my long-term DBS position by buying a short DLCs. Price doesn't move down in one direction. It will go up, down, up, down. DBS had 2022 and 2023 in a triangular pattern. It moved down sometimes in a period of 19 weeks and moved down like 20 plus percent. Uh, rather than to waste this opportunity, we can consider some short-term price trading if it might just break that triangle pattern. I'm not saying that it will, but in case it does, right? Okay, so I come to the end of this video here and I hope that you benefit from the fact that you know that DBS is now trapped in a triangular pattern. And if you do like me to talk about other videos, other stocks, do let me know. All right. I'd be very happy to discuss that. And I see you in my next video. And remember to press that subscribe button.